Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the live recording of the question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 13th of November. So I'm going to be showing you lots of lovely new fabrics that have come into the shop this past week and answering all of your sewing and dressmaking questions. So as always there'll be lots of inspiration and ideas and tips to share. So if you are watching here on YouTube and you would like like to add something or you'd like to add a question that you that I can cover in a future session then please feel free to leave a comment on this video you will see me just reading out any comments and questions that come in live as well just so you've got a bit of context about what everybody's talking about but I hope you enjoy it and feel inspired and I'll see you very soon lovely to see you all wherever you are usually we've got quite a spread of people from all over the country all over the world so hello wherever you are joining from today I've got some new things to show you tonight. I've got lots of questions as well. Hopefully I'll get through them all again. So as always, lots of things to share and learn and pick up from. And as always, if you've got anything that you want to add in um, or that maybe you've got some of your own experiences to some of the questions that I'm answering as well, then feel free to chip in and I will keep everybody updated with the comments that are coming in live as well. So, so yeah, it's lovely to see you all and to see where you're from as well. So thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, and yeah, I hope you've all had a nice weekend. Maybe you had time to do some sewing. I feel like maybe people are starting to get slightly busy with other things that might happen at this time of year. Um, but yeah, if you want to just get lost in a little kind of bubble of fabric and sewing for a bit, then you're in the right place. Um, now, hopefully you might see something exciting new behind me as well so today joe has put in the christmas window display doesn't it look beautiful i'll do a little spin round so just so that you can see um so it's lovely traditional red and white themed it's really lovely nice twinkly lights and um, it's always really nice to get the christmas window in because it just it just kind of brightens things up a bit you know it's this time of year that like you just the days just get so short here don't they and just a little bit cold and well so yeah it's nice to have some twinkly lights to look at so I'll do like a full kind of tour and like show you around and everything um, and get that video up on the YouTube channel later in the week but yeah you can sort of see the nice twinkly lights behind me here anyway um okay so the new things and like updates that I wanted to share with you first of all um because I know a lot of people had emailed to ask and were wanting to get hold of some of this fabric by meter and um, so both colorways are now on the website available by the meter and um, so there's there's this one so this was what was in our Stylark sable kit um I think we do still have some of the kits left um, but yeah, you can get, the we do now have the fabric listed by the meter. So this colorway and this colorway as well. It is quite limited stock. Basically, when I ordered it, I just got kind of everything that was sort of available. Um, and and yeah, it's so kind of like the stock that we've got is the stock that we've got. And there isn't, there isn't any more after that. But it's really, obviously really good for cardigans. If you've already got the Marlowe pattern, it would be good for that as well. Um, I also think that it would be really nice for the toaster version to be really warm. Um, and I think it's the right sort of thickness. It would hold the kind of shape of that, of the neckline of the toaster too, really well too. Um, so, so yeah, just to let you know that that is available. And then there are a few new things to show you as well. So keeping it in the cosy sort of... Uh, cozy vibe we have had some new colors and then like a replenishment of the colors that we've had before as well of this sweatshirting here and um, let me get the name right it's something to do, something about alpine and um, this particular one is the marled chambray alpine fur back sweatshirting fabric so it's 67 cotton 30 polyester and three percent lycra and it's basically like a kind of two-sided fabric or kind of like uh double sort of bonded fabric um and the back is kind of like fluffy so it's like it's not really it's not like really thick and fluffy but yeah hopefully you can kind of see what it's like there and then the other side just looks like regular sweatshirting so really nice and cozy 
good for all your classic jumper patterns make a nice cozy hoodie and um, jogging bottoms as well i think it'd be really warm for that so quite a few different colors i'm pretty sure that this is a new color that marled one and then we've also got it in this lovely kind of dusky pink color let's see what i've called that muted mauve um, and then yeah that's the so the so the fur that's on the back always kind of tones or matches with the with the main fabric which is quite nice it's not sometimes you get fabrics and they're like the fur on the back is just all cream or whatever but these ones kind of match um so yeah and then what else have we got that's the wash teal that colorway wash teal and then this really lovely bluey one here that one is the cornflower and then finally like a nice neutral one marled accru and um, so you could definitely combo them for a bit of color blocking as well if you wanted to do that somebody was asking about the cashmere stanton hoodie and um, so so yeah when you've got you know when we've got like a little range of the same type of sweatshirting then you know that's always going to combine really well for for them um, color blocking but i will answer your question in more detail if you're watching already um okay someone's saying it's in the burda pattern book this month excellent and um, will you be getting any more of the navy navy cable knit in um i'm trying to think what one that is the navy oh the one that was in the kit i don't know if we will janet but drop us an email because i i've got a feeling that potentially there might be some bolt ends of it somewhere but I'm not sure off the top of my head but I don't we don't have any more like stock of it coming and um, I have the kit you're wearing do I pre-wash the plain black fabric used for the cuffs and the button band is navy um but yeah yeah you can do um I would yeah I would I would wash it I'm pretty sure did I not say about that in the in the video I would wash it on um like 30 degrees regular cycle yeah would the muted mauve be suitable for the toaster yeah i think it would be it'd be really nice um so yeah that's those ones and then we've had a few a few um brushed cottons here these are really really nice ones so they're uh, the brand or like designer whatever is coca that's a japanese um company so they're made in japan they're really lovely so this is the coca charcoal gray embroidered flowers brushed cotton fabrics 100 percent cotton and it's all it's like a cotton twill really that like the the sort of base fabric but then it's brushed on both sides so it feels really soft and kind of snuggly on both sides i would say it's more toward like a kind of medium weight like the top end of lightweight and to medium weight in terms of its sort of thickness and then it's got these really beautiful embroidered flowers on it they're very detailed very delicate they look really really nice so two colorways of that one this sort of darker gray one and then we've also got this lighter gray one and it's almost like a kind of petroly teal color the embroidery it's so nice such a lovely shade so this would be really good you could make you could make like a cozy shirt with it so any type of like shirt or blouse pattern um or you could just make like a simple top you know even something like the helen's closet ashton you know something that's just really quite simple i think if you were to do anything that had gathers in it it, it would still work it would just hold the fullness and the shape of the gathers a bit more i wouldn't i probably wouldn't describe it as being like particularly drapey or sort of floaty or flowy um because you know it is cotton it does have that structure to it but it is a really love it feels very luxurious it's really really lovely and um, so yeah they are new ones what other questions here do you have any matching ribbing for the alpine sweatshirting it didn't it what there wasn't like a, a range of sort of specific matching ones that came with it and um, so it would just kind of be a case of sort of seeing if any of the other ones tone if there's a particular shade you're interested in then either drop me a direct message or you can send us an email as well and then one of the um one of the team can have a look at other sort of ones that we've got in stock and see what matches and um, will you be getting any more stretch velvet and yes we're expecting a delivery tomorrow and then once all of the kits have been dispatched and made that we're using that fabric then there will be some fabric left over as well so just email us to get put on the wait list for that do you have any fake fur to make a collar for jackets like the back of the fur backed corduroy we don't i'm sorry we tend not to stock 
they won't they pretend not to stock that kind of thing usually the first stuff we have is like when it's sort of backed onto another fabric and um, the coca fabric is really nice i know it is, it's it's lovely it's really nice um are you planning to run any retreats at g and g in the new year they sold out so quickly and i'd love to do one Hopefully, yes, again, you can email us to go on the wait list to be the first one to hear about that. Which fabric have you used for the binding on the cardigan, please? It's it's um, a cotton a cotton polyester mix. I can't remember the exact composition. I think it might be maybe like 70 cotton, 30 polyester. It's a fleece back sweatshirting. And we picked this one specifically because we felt like it had the right sort of thickness to kind of match the thickness of the of the main fabric and um, I have we did have some of that left as well I am pretty sure that it is online um, but I, I'll double check that with Hannah who lists everything online tomorrow um, but yeah it should it should be online already and um, okay so the then the other couple of new things that I wanted to show you there was just a couple of the again the Japanese Nanny Aero prints so this one here is a kind of lovely sort of darker colorway it's a cotton silk mix so it's the base that's 70 cotton 30 percent silk um and and yeah it's just got this you know if you if you know nanny early you know that sort of aesthetic and design it's really beautiful it's like a work of art always really lovely colors so yeah just a a nice luxurious base cloth in that one and then this is a double gauze i think we had this one before um but we've had a little bit of that one come back in again it's a beautiful bright blue color um and yeah quite a sort of abstract kind of oversized scale on that one really nice so both of them are online too and then a little range of more sort of like stable more kind of like again bordering on the kind of more medium weight cotton not quite a cotton lawn but it's not too not too thick and stiff and um, but it is 100 percent cotton fabric it's seven berry again it's japanese it's the dotted waves and we've got quite a few different colors of this one and um, so this this is quite good if you're still quite new to dress making and you're looking for something that's just quite stable and quite easy to work with so um this particular color here yeah is the is the night colorway so it's like a really sort of dark navy like a dark color and then the other ones are i'll put them all together so a kind of like greeny sort of teal color ready one and then a nice kind of ochre color at the bottom as well and um, so that's nice to have that little range there um hello 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 okay so i think that was everything that was in my brand new pile to show you um, there was a comment from the YouTube when I post the video on YouTube then um, we you know I sometimes get sort of questions and input from there as well so last week we had a question that was asking um, for a pattern for a v-neck sleeveless top um, for knitted fabric and somebody is suggesting to check out the Keith Fest from Style Arc so another recommendation there if you're looking for a v-neck sleeveless top and um, so yeah uh, somebody's saying i love your sweater thank you and um, this is the sable cardigan and we've got this this fabric is now available by the meter okay so the first question that was sent in beforehand was i'm sewing a toile wedding dress exciting with a sateen viscose and the seams keep puckering i've tried thinner needles adjusting the tension and using better thread but it's still happening any advice could i use some stabilizing tape um so yeah my, i mean you said you tried adjusting the tension that was kind of like my first thought if it was puckering is the tension is the tension too high um and yeah is that you know is it is it then that the fabrics kind of like you know the, the yeah the thread is basically too tight then in relation to the fabric i've i've not really worked a huge amount with with satin viscose and i don't know how thick it is either um i suppose i have what that that, that fabric godmother viscose that they had that had a satin finish i did work with that quite a few times and i found i did find it to be okay and that was with a size uh, 60 microtex needle and using gutterman thread um and i didn't really find that it puckered 
the other thing that I was thinking maybe you could try is, you know, like the really, really fine tissue paper, like if you've ordered fabric from us before, the kind of tissue paper that we wrap the fabric in. Um, what I have done before when I've been working with silk to sort of help stabilize it as I sew is to, to basically like sew that as you're doing it and that helps us kind of like stabilize the fabric as you're sewing it and then you just kind of tear it the stitches obviously go through it and then you can just kind of tear it off afterwards and um, so so that might help someone suggesting a teflon foot can help sateen fabric fabric flow better under the needle and um, so so yeah a teflon foot yeah i think that's a good idea to try and um, the other thing that that might help if you want to try something and bef before you have a chance to get a Teflon foot um, is that I have in the past when I have wanted to use a Teflon foot in a particular instance in time when I've not been able to get it I don't know it was probably the evening or something and um, is that I have put some scotch tape on the bottom of the foot of my sewing machine before and that helps the fabric to slide a little bit as well so definitely worth trying those things too um so so yeah good luck it sounds frustrating though I, I know I, I know what you mean I hate when that happens when you're like trying to trying to solve an issue like that with lots of trial and error um okay so the next question was I enjoyed watching you on the tv yeah that was the other thing <laughs> that I meant to say to you it just reminded me now and um, if you didn't get a chance to see me on channel 5 shop smart save money on Friday you can watch it back on the channel 5 app um, which I know doesn't probably help you if you're not in the UK. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, how you could watch it if you're not in the UK. Um, but but yeah, you can watch it on there now if you want to see some sewing machine chat. Um, so the question was, when comparing the two machines, you made a point about the pressure foot. I think you said it was automated in the Brother, but not in the on the JL one, John Lewis one. Could you explain this please so basically on the brother one there's a little kind of slider switch like dial not a dial because a dial round and um, yeah like a little sort of slider switch thing and um, which which changes the sensitivity of the foot pedal so you so it means that you can make make the machine go really slow and it doesn't matter how hard you press on the pedal it won't go above a certain speed whereas if you like make it go a bit faster or you put it up to the fastest speed then it, it will still go slow but it means you have to be more sensitive with the pedal so if you want it to go slow you just press the pedal a little bit if you want it to go faster then you press the pedal more so it's just it's almost sets like a speed limit on how quickly the machine will sew so that's what the brother one had and um, whereas the john the john lewis machine just had sort of like one kind of speed setting and the, the pedal was just like one sensitivity so you know if you wanted to control the speed of the machine you would have to do it with how much pressure you're putting on the foot pedal whereas yeah you can just sort of limit it a bit more with the brother one so so yeah and um, somebody's saying my genome machine has a similar speed control yeah i think it probably just depends on like the level of the model of the sewing machine so like the john lewis one was like a, quite a basic one and um, and it is the john lewis one was actually a genome machine but just with you know the the sort of core of it was a genome machine but it you know i guess it was like branded or sort of the design was done for for john lewis and um, but it was you know it was more like an entry sort of level machine like quite a basic one so it just but you know as you go up i'm sure there are with all of the different machine manufacturers you know you can you can have that sort of setting and um, on the topic of the puckering visco sateen somebody's saying on my machine i need to hold lightweight fabrics almost slightly taut to stop them puckering interesting so another little thing to try there i love the tv appearance oh thank you i thought it was so interesting about how well the brother machine handled thick fabric i know yeah i could i could really notice a difference like it was the same because i put the same needle in obviously they don't go into like a significant amount of detail but there was like a jeans needle in both of the machines when i was sewing the denim um because it you know to make it like the same basically same thread and everything but yeah it did really struggle with that th with the thicker denim um so so yeah a, a sort of expansion of that question that was sent in beforehand was i'm an intermediate sewer and i'm thinking of upgrading my machine what key features would you look for in a machine uh you know i i i feel like because 
I personally have only ever used brother sewing machines before. I don't like I don't have in-depth experience of using like lots of different models of machines. And um, you need to have to speak to like a sewing machine shop to get like a, a fair sort of comparison between them all. Because my, my my personal experience is just generally with brother sewing machines. It wasn't me, by the way, that picked the machines that were in the um, on the TV show. They sort of like came up with those ones and then asked me if it would be good to compare them. And I felt like the features on both machines were different enough that it would make a good comparison. But I personally think that if, you know, if you're an intermediate sewer and you're sewing a lot and you're, you know, you're really into your hobby, you're using your machine a lot. My general advice is that, you know, the, 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 the higher price point you go, you generally you tend to get just like a better machine that like you do kind of get what you pay for. A one-step buttonhole is a good function to look for. I, I, my experience of using brother machines is generally that if it's got that, then it's you know it is quite a good machine as opposed to a four-step buttonhole. Um, you know, the speed control is quite good if it's got some kind of needle threader. That's quite good as well. Um, there are different types of needle threader that you can get. Some of them are a little bit more automatic than others. Um, but obviously it helps, you know, you're not having to be like and try and thread the needle. And um, the other thing that I really noticed as well, which they didn't mention on the TV thing, um, was that the light was really different too. So because the like the casing or like the, you know, the, you know, the kind of design of the John Lewis one was dark, you know, it was like navy. I, I mean, it looked really cool. It looked really nice, but the light wasn't really that bright. And then because the machine was dark, obviously it wasn't really reflecting off anything. But then the light on the Brother sewing machine was much, much brighter. Um, and also because the machine is white, then like the light reflects off that as well. So I just generally felt like the light was a lot better. So then that's maybe like another thing to look for as well. Um, is, you know, if it's got a nice bright light, I guess you can always add that sort of independently to the machine if you just get a really good lamp or whatever. Um, but yeah, that was another thing that I sort of noticed. Um, oh yeah, needle down is a must. Yeah, that, that, that was, that is, I do find that really useful. And the machines that I've used for years and years and years always have that. I've just always had that function. So it means when you take your foot off the pedal, the machine always stops with the needle in the fabric. It's just really good for like helping to keep extra control over the fabric, I think. Um, I mean, I guess if your machine didn't do that, you would just get used to turning the hand wheel and lowering it. Um, but but yeah, it is useful if it has that as well. Um, agree, needle down, automatic buttonhole, and I love my automatic final stitch finish and thread cutting. Yeah, the thread cutter is really nice too. Um, my brother needle threader is always breaking. Not sure if it is well made. Oh, that's a shame. Um, sorry, missed all this. What was the program called? So it's on channel five. And it's called Shop Smart Save Money. And it was episode seven that was aired on Friday. That's the one that I'm in. Um, okay, so the next question was, what is the best way to hem a wide leg velvet jumpsuit? So the thing that came to mind when I was thinking about this, if it's a wide leg velvet jumpsuit, I feel like you would want the hem to have like a decent amount of depth to sort of hold the shape of that wide leg. But depending on on the cut of the leg, like whether it's sort of just quite straight down or whether it does this would sort of affect how you'd want to hem it. Because if it if it if it does kind of flare out a little bit more and there's no kind of adjustment to like the the shape of the of 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 the edge of the fabric here. So if it is just like this, then and you've got quite a deep hem, then you're effectively trying to fit quite a lot of fabric into what will be like a narrower circumference if it you know if the if the cut of the legs quite like that so then you might want to like trim a little bit off the side seams and have it kind of angled where your hem allowance is just so it, it fits in better and sits flatter um it depends whether you want to see like a line of stitching or not i mean i've got i've got stretch velvet trousers on just now and i guess just like the style of them um I just I just top stitch the hem but that's because there is a lot of other top stitching in the trousers so I think it sort of depends on the kind of aesthetic and style of the trousers as well it might be that maybe you want to do like a little a hand sewing or like a little catch stitch to sew it instead so you don't see a line of stitching around the hem which would you know would be like a little bit more subtle so so yeah like a a, a blind hem or like a catch stitch by hand where you just you're taking like the main stitch in the hem allowance that's turned back and then just like catching a tiny little bit of thread of the main fabric. Um, 
so so yeah that would be my suggestion on my genomic you can set the needle to stay up or down yeah that's what the um the brother ones are like that as well integral walking foot in the faffs is really useful for quilting yes think about quilting capability if you think you'll quilt too yeah, because you could, cause also what I found as well is that over the years, as I've sort of upgraded and got to like higher levels of brother sewing machines, that the arm tends to be a bit longer as well. So it means that you just have more space under the sewing, sewing machine. So if you're sewing like quilt, you know, if you're if you are doing a bit of quilts or you're doing other projects where there's like just more generally like more fabric or it's more bulky, um, you know, coats or whatever, or just, yeah, just when you're working with something that's got more fabric, then it's, you know, it can be quite useful to have that extra space under the, like the arm of the sewing machine as well. Okay, the next one was when cutting lining, should it be the same as the outer pattern size or slightly bigger? I'm making a coat. So, um, it depends what way you're lining it and what the coat is but if you're having like a separate lining to the to the outside as opposed to flat lining it then yeah typically the at the at the center back on the back bodice there's usually like a little pleat which makes the lining a bit bigger um but i would say i'm trying to i've never actually made a garment before where i've like made my own lining I've only ever like lined garments when the pattern has just had a lining so I'm trying to think what what the other pattern pieces were like but I don't think it was bigger than anywhere else it was just that center back it's got, sometimes they tend to be longer actually as well um so you know so you end up with like your hem allowance of your main fabric coming up at the bottom but then quite commonly the lining it doesn't sort of sit flush with the top of that like it'll kind of hang over a little bit as well that's quite common um so so yeah i hope that helps the next one was i'd like to add a woven skirt to a jersey t-shirt any tips i would say consider how like how how heavy the the skirt fabric actually is because what it might do is stretch the t-shirt and kind of pull it down so depending on where you actually want like the that that sort of join seam to sit between the skirt and the t-shirt just think about how much weight will will pull on it, and um, if you know if if that that woven fabric is quite heavy, um, because yeah, it, it can just be tricky when you're combining like two very different types of fabric like that. Okay, the next one was how do you calculate a neck band for a stretch a velvet dress? Um, so it's a good question. There's quite a few ways to do it. Sometimes people just sort of try eighty percent and see see how it goes um, as like a kind of rule of thumb so you make it 80 percent smaller it really depends on how stretchy the fabric is um because if it's not that stretchy you might need it longer than that and um, but if it's very stretchy potentially it might even need to be smaller than that um so so yeah there is a way that you can kind of work it out sort of by just kind of cutting like a strip of the neck band and then kind of roughly stretching it round. I do have a YouTube video that's getting quite old now. I made it quite a few years ago, but you know, a lot of people do still watch it and people still say it's useful. So hopefully it is. But if you just search like my name on YouTube, Lauren Jersey neck band, it will come up and it, and it sort of like explains a couple of ways that you can, you can work it out as well. Um, but yeah, you know, it can, it can just vary depending on how stretchy the, the, the fabric actually is. Um, okay, let's see. And then another, quite a lot of velvet questions tonight. Um, how do you hem a stretch a velvet dress? I would probably go for the cat, the hand, hand catch stitching again, I think. I feel like on a dress, maybe you'd want it to look a bit more, you know, you'd want it to have a more kind of special finish so i would probably suggest the, the the hand stitching catch stitch on that one too um okay the next one was how can i line the avid seamstress shift dress specifically the kick pleat um so the shift dress is did i bring that over actually did i bring it over to answer another question no it was the day dress and the line dress um so i think what it is tricky I've never actually like made my own lining before when something's got a kick pleat. 
but I did find a tutorial on the on pattern pages, a website called Pattern Pages. So if you search for Pattern Pages kick pleat lining, then you'll see it had it looked like it had some nice diagrams that sort of explained it because I think it can be a little bit tricky with a kick pleat. Um, I, the other way that you could do it if you wanted, in which case the lining just sort of happens as you're doing the main construction is to flat line it, where you basically just cut out the lining pieces and the main fabric, you baste them together within the seam allowances before you start putting it together. And then as you put the whole thing together, it is just lined anyway. Um, in which case, you know, you would just kind of construct the, the kick pleat as as per the instructions and the lining would just kind of automatically be there. Um, so that's that's another option to, to maybe think about as well. Um, okay, somebody's saying, yeah, a larger bobbin spool comes with the Bernina. Okay, interesting. Any tips for cuffing, please? Um, in terms of what? Can you be like a little bit more specific? I do have a, bl a blog post and a video that I did, again, I did it a couple of years ago and it is on the cuffing kind of packs that you can get where it's got like one finished edge and then effectively like a raw edge at the other side and I did a tutorial that was on use it, cutting that down and using it for neck bands using it for hem bands and cuffs so you could you could check that out my granny always said that that aligning should be bigger but I've never made a coat so not tried that yes and on the higher Berninas you can sink your heel into the presser foot for needle up or down for hands-free sewing. Well, that sounds fancy. But I guess that's what Beninas are. They are very fancy, aren't they? I want to make a shower-proof jacket and I am looking for a soft shell fabric or something similar. Do you have anything that would work for that? I don't have any soft shell fabric, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't have it. I don't think I've got anything that fits that criteria at the moment, sorry. Um, okay, the next question was, do you have any good ideas for small projects to use up my Thelma? Quilted fabric left from my Hovia kit, please. I've made mittens, they sound really cool, but some other inspiration would be great. Um, I have seen people use it to make bags before, which looks quite cool. Um, or also last winter, I made some hats. Um, I'm sure there are other hat patterns that you could get as well if you weren't sure on this style. Um, but I made some aviator hats using the waves and wild pattern, um, which goes like child all the way up to adult. Um, it's really nice and warm and I lined it with some of our Teddy Sherling fabric too. So yeah, you can see it just uses various bits and pieces there. I used the leftovers from when I made the kits to make the hats. Um, so yeah, that's another idea. Um, okay, the next question was, I have bought some pre-quilted fabric, not the Mind the Maker, as it was a bit out of my price range. Mistake I have made is that it was cheaper because it was only quilted on one side. The other side is the insulated part. Ah, so it looks like it's like just basically got the wadding on one side and then the, the outer fabric on the other. Whereas the Mind the Maker has, has got like this fabric on both sides so you don't see the wadding. Um, what would be the best way to line it? I'm only going to do a twirl anyway and probably try the Hovia. If that works, then I will buy the more expensive fabric, but I can't get my head around how to line the cheaper fabric. I'm pretty sure, isn't there a lined option with the Hovia? So if you've got the Hovia pattern, I think there is an option to line that. When we did it with the kit, we didn't do that option because the fabric effectively was already lined. Um, but but again, the other thing that you could do is what I was saying before is, is flatline it, where you just cut out the lining the same as the outer pieces um, and then you baste them together in, this, in the side seams, uh, in the seam allowance and then just construct the garment as normal. That's what I did when I made my Kelly Anorak and I didn't use the lining pack that you can get for the Kelly Anorak, the Closet Core Kelly Anorak. I just flatlined it um, with a with a fabric that I quilted myself um, and yeah it, you know it works fine um, so hopefully some ideas there um, cuffing for the Sydney top merchant and mills putting stretch cuffing onto a non-stretch quilted fabric um, as in do you need to do you need to get some cuffing so we do have we do have those cuffing packs or you can buy the ribbing 
R-I-B-B-I-N-G, ribbing, not ribbon, um, fabric, which is, um, it's, it's like tubular, stretchy ribbing fabric that you, you need to buy by the 10 centimeter. Um, and then, and then, yeah, you just, just sew it on. Um, oh, I love the hat. Thanks. Um, okay, the next one was, at, okay, this was a question that someone emailed in along with a photo um, of a fabric that was, the composition was labelled as 50% camel. I've never heard of a fabric that is 50% camel before, but there you go. Um, and 50% lamb's wool. Any suggestions as to what pattern would be good to use for it, please? Um, it kind of, the, the weave of the, obviously it was a photo, so I didn't really feel it. Um, but the weave of the fabric kind of looked, it looked like a fabric that would be suitable for making a coat to me. Um, I'm, I mean, you know, there's lots of different coat patterns out there, but um, ones that I've made before that I like, as you know, are the Green Line Yates coat. I like the Closet Clover Claire coat as well. It's like, you know, sort of like smarter, smarter kind of lined woolen coats. Um, but there are other options out there. There's an, there's an avid seamstress one as well. And if you've got three and a half meters, that should be enough to make, you know, you just have quite a lot of options in terms of making like a nice long coat. Um, looks like the Hovia does have a lining version. Yeah, I thought it did. I thought it did. Okay, the next one was, can you suggest a stretch velvet or stretch corduroy for the Megan Nielsen Ash, please? And what material would be suitable for a twelve so I don't waste my nice material if I need to tweak the pattern? Have you got a jeans zip kit to go with it? We don't have a specific jeans zip kit, but we do have jeans zips. We've got rivets, we've got buttons. That's that's essentially what you need. Um, so in terms of stretch velvet, I don't have any just now available. The stuff that's coming that we used in the Eleanor kits this month, I think would be suitable, um, but it's not available by the meter yet. It's coming in a navy, a pink, and then this camel-y sort of uh, tanny colour here that I've got on just now. We do have this stretch needle cord that I have used to make the closet court ginger jeans before, which I think are quite similar to the ash. Um, so this this particular colour is the Peacock Stretch Cotton Needle Corduroy. It's 1560 a metre, 96 cotton, 4% elastane. It comes in various different colours as well. So I think you could use that to that, that stretch um, needle cord. Could be a nice option. Um, can I use cord for the Soul House 7 free range slacks? Um, I'm trying to think what they, have they got an elasticated waist? I can't remember. Um, any pattern suggestions for vest made with boiled wool, please? Something simple. Um, try the, the Chalk and Notch Max T. I wonder if you could, could make that. Um, or someone else was suggest what was it? Someone else was suggesting a a, a a a sleeveless top, which I guess could sort of be like a vest. That was the Keith vest from Style Arc. I wonder if that would be okay. To Suti Amara vest. Thank you, Megan. Um have you got any stretch denim that could be used for the Eleanor? Yeah, we do. I looked this out last week. And now I can't remember what it's called. We do have a stretch denim that I feel like is as stretchy as the velvet. I'm sorry that I can't remember it now. See, if you send me a direct message, I'll find it and I'll send you what the link is. Yes, they're elasticated. I think for the free range slacks and a cord, it would have to be quite a kind of lightweight needle cord. Otherwise it might feel bulky. That stretch one that I just showed for making the Megan Nielsen Ash, I think that has got too much structure in it and I think it would probably feel like a bit too bulky and kind of cumbersome. I think I might actually have this one here though, just happened to sort of have it to hand. This is one of the Dashwood needle corduroys, it's the navy one and it's 100% cotton. Um, so it doesn't have any stretch, um, but it is just much finer and sort of lighter weight. See if I hold it up, how it goes kind of quite, quite sort of floppy. It doesn't, you know, I wouldn't say it's drapey, it's cotton. Cotton fabric tends to not really be like drapey, but I feel like it probably, if you did really want to do it in cord, it would be something like this that you'd, that you'd have to get. Um, cool Crafting have a very simple vest type top. Very on trend at the moment, yeah, indeed. Um, I'm fairly certain you said it was the 10.2 ounce denim last week. 
yeah possibly we've got basically we've gotten quite a lot of denims that were like ex-designer denims and they were all quite similar but still different so it's just hard for me to retain like what every single different denim is but yeah um because because weirdly even though the percentage of elastane in the denim can be the same or very similar, the actual physical amount of percentage stretch can still be quite different. It's weird. I guess it's just the way it's made. Um, but Hannah usually does add on to the listings like the 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 stretch percentage, which is like the physical amount of stretch that, that the fabric's got as well. So you can always use that as a guide. Um, Okay, do you have any terracotta fabric for trousers? Um, mm, I'd need to think on that one. I'm not sure if I. I'm not sure if I do actually have it in that cut. A lot of our trouser fabric tends to be not as sort of bright, bright colours as that. Um, so over it have a tie pattern. Oh, did I miss that question? Somebody. Oh, fabric pattern recommendations for a man's tie. Yeah. The so so over it one. There we go. And a maven patterns have the Warwick tie. Okay, lovely. Thanks everyone for doing my research for me. Um okay, so where was I? The next question was fabric for the Tilly and the Buttons BB skirt warm for winter. This is quite a, it's for stretch fabric, quite a fitted sort of pencil skirt. Ideally it's meant for Ponte Roma. I I tend not to stock a lot of Ponte Roma to be honest, mostly because it's a bit too kind of squeaky and polyester -y for me, a lot of the stuff that you see, but sometimes I do come across nice po viscose ponty romas. Not very often though. And unfortunately the one that we did have that came in like a really classic navy and black is, is gone. I can't get any more from the supplier. So I don't think, I'm really sorry. I don't think I've actually got anything that would that would be like really well suited to the BB skirt, but 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 yeah, if you're searching for something, Ponte Roma would be good. Um, somebody's also suggesting sew me something, have a tie pattern. Sometimes these things are free as well, to, like a tie pattern might be free too, so you could check a few out of them, see if you can see if you can get a free one anywhere. Um, okay, the next one was, can you recommend a skirt pattern? I'm thinking A line wintery for wool fabric knee slash midi length and would that herringbone red wool fabric you have be suitable for such a skirt and um, so this is the red herringbone here the really lovely color and and yeah i think it would be suitable for a skirt especially an a-line one it's got a nice amount of thickness to it. i think it would hold the shape of an a-line skirt the sovereign ava is like really quite a nice classic and um, i really like that one you could take it has Set in seam side pockets but you could definitely just take them out i've made it before without them and um, and that's just quite a nice sort of simple classic one closet core also have the fior skirt um which has um wh which again is just sort of quite simple it has a few variations on the front of the packet it's got it's got a wrap and a button down one but there is another variation in the fior skirt closet core fior skirt where it is just like a, a sort of you know plainer sort of simpler style with like a center back um zip so there's that you know i'm sure there's lots of other kind of classic a-line skirt patterns too but they were sort of two that came to mind and um, oh somebody's also suggesting that scuba is good made a couple of scuba suede type okay i guess that's for the bb skirt the telling buttons bb um, okay, the next one was, could I please ask for ideas for Liberty Tan Alone fabric for a dress for winter? So last winter, I made the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo, um, this one. I made this version here in one of the Christmas ta <laughs> Liberty Tan Alones. And, and I thought it worked really well. I did line the skirt part of it in like a sort of slippery viscose lining. <coughs> Excuse me. And I did that just by basically cutting out the, the, the pieces the same. And then when I came to attach the, the skirt to the bodice, I just attached the lining at the same time as well. Um, so, so yeah, that can sort of help to kind of, I guess, make the tan alone feel a bit more substantial for the winter time. Um, so that would be my suggestion there. But there are there are a few other ones that, that, I, that I pulled out as well. The Avid Seamstress. Day dress, I think it'd be nice to. It's also got shorter sleeves, whereas the indigo has longer sleeves. 
the Avid Seamstress A-line dress and the assembly line. There's the multi-sleeve dress and the cuff dress. <coughs> Sorry, I think I've like inhaled a fabric fibre here. Um, I bought the Eleanor kit, so I made a note of the fabric you suggested using for the toile. It was washed indigo 10.2 ounce stretch denim. Thank you for keeping me right, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, the next question was, I'm making the Atelier Jupe Danny. What fabric would make a good lining and button placket? This looked like a kind of fleecy jacket. And then one of the options was that then it had... It looked, looked more like a kind of sturdy or kind of cotton fabric for the placket. Um, what I was thinking might be quite nice is if you lined, you could line the body, you could probably get away with lining the sleeves in this as well. Um, but you could, you could line it with like a, a nice brushed cotton like this one and then do the button placket in a more sort of stable cotton twill. So this is a range of seven berry cotton twills. They're hundred percent cotton. They're sort of like like a nice, a good all rounder. They're good for lots of different things, and they come in like a nice rainbow of colours as well. So yeah, this particular one is the sage cotton twill fabric, but as I said, comes in lots of colours. And then this is one of the Robert Kaufman checked brush flannels, but it comes in lots of different colours as well. They also happen to look quite nice together too. Um. So that was my suggestions there. The next one was, can you suggest a cosy fabric for the new Helen's Closet Arbutus robe? Um, so this looked like a nice cosy dressing gown. Um, I think this would be nice. There's another brushed cotton here. Um, I've suggested this for pyjamas too, but I think, yeah, if you want, if you want something that sort of feels nice and cosy and snuggly, but it's not too thick and heavy, then I think that that would be a nice option. Um, so that one is the Lapis and Red Checked Cotton Flannel Fabrics, 100% cotton and 1250 a meter. Or the other, what, what else did I bring over? The other thing that I might be quite, that I think might be quite good. This one here, again, it comes in lots of different colors. It's, this is the Mint Viscose Blended Knit Fabric. It's a polyester viscose mix, but we used it to make the named Esme cardigan last year, which is like quite a long cardigan. Um, and, you know, I think it could definitely have cosy dressing gown vibes as well. And um, so I suppose if you wanted something sort of like a bit snugglier and kind of thicker and heavier, then that might be a nice option. And again, it has comes in lots of different colours as well. Um, OK, the next one was, is the double sided knit fabric suitable for a South Bank sweater? That is, a, sorry, I didn't have any to pull over, but basically we had like a fabric that was like this, but it was it was double sided. So it was the same fabric, but two different colours, like a different colour one side to the other. So it's a, a little bit thicker because it's, yeah, it's like two layers together, basically. I think it would be because usually when, because it's got that roll down neck, the the south bank. So by so effectively, by the time you've like rolled it down, it's going to be four layers of fabric there. And I think the fabric would have enough stability to hold that shape really nicely. I think it would be nice and cosy. Um, OK, the next one, next question was a blouse or top pattern recommendations for brushed cotton fabric, please. I don't know if you were thinking of like a shirt when you said blouse, but I've made the Green Line Art shirt and a brushed cotton before and I love it. It's so cosy, but I just generally love the Green Line Archer shirt. So it's good in so many different types of fabrics. M more in the top vein, you could do the Friday Pattern Company Donny, um, the Merchant Mills Camber, the Helen's Closet Ashton. I think they're all sort of quite, the styles of them are quite kind of simple. And yeah, I think they would, they would work in a brushed cotton, feel nice and cosy. Next one was, would baby cord fabric be suitable for a bias cut skirt? I'm not, I'm not sure to be honest, maybe. Potentially if it was like what, the, like the, um, that, this Dashwood one, which is just a bit thinner, it's really quite fine, it's 100% cotton. I just think, I think even if when it's cut in the bias, this type of fabric, I don't think it would totally like, drape and kind of move like you would expect to buy a skirt cut skirt to, to hang it would hold hold like a little bit more of the structure but maybe you wouldn't mind that i'm not sure i don't know i wasn't as sure on that one and um, next one was sweat top sewing patterns for children i would check out the brindle and twig website they have loads and loads of different 
sewing patterns for kids, like babies up to like, you know, more kind of like young teenagers, like that sort of age. Loads of different styles and yeah, everything. It's, it's really good. Um, I use a lot of their patterns for, for making stuff for my kids. So it's brindle and twig. Um, the next one was sewing patterns for women's leggings. I personally have made the Helen's Closet Avery and the Megan Nielsen Virginia leggings. I like both of them. Um, I, I would say that the Helen's Closet Avery come up a bit higher probably than both both versions of the Megan Nielsen Virginia. But yeah, I've made both. I like both. I've worn both. So yeah, I would recommend both. Um, the next one was which weight of denim to use for a lady's shirt with a frilled collar. That sounds really nice. I couldn't find the bolt, but the fabric that you want is the combed denim, the indigo combed denim fabric. Um, we've usually always got it in stock. It, it's so popular. The last time we got extra because it was always just selling out so quickly. It's a, just a really good, like, it's a really nice denim-y colour. The weight of it's really, it's really soft. The weight of it's much lighter and it's definitely good for things like doing a frill collar. Um, the next one was fabrics for the So Liberated Stasia Maxi version, no animal print. So I brought over a few options for you that I think are all two or, I think two are viscose, one's a bamboo um, cotton. This one here is a viscose jersey, polka wave viscose jersey here, um, which is really nice. It's like spotty, but then yeah, hopefully you can kind of see that the spots are like in subtle wave designs. I mean, you wouldn't pattern match it or anything, but a nice sort of take on a spotty one, navy in the background. And then a couple of more sort of floral ones. This one here is the Petal Bloom on Navy Viscose Jersey fabric. It does also come in another colourway as well. Um, but that would be a nice one too. It swishes around nicely. When we did the, the Stasia as a kit, the fabric that we used draped in basically in the same way as that. Um, and then this one is a bamboo cotton more more bamboo than cotton 67 bamboo 28 percent cotton and five elastane so the bamboo component makes it like sort of drape and swish really nicely too so it's just quite a sort of small scale ditzy print this comes in another colorway as well like a kind of plummy purpley colorway too and um, so that's another option there um okay the next one was i want to make the cashmere stanton hoodie dress using a patterned and a plain sweatshirting slash French terry, probably with ribbing. I'm finding it hard to see what will go together and what weights of material are compatible. Can you show some combinations? I tend to go for pinks, blue, teal, turquoise type colors. The pink Chica Cheetah was one that caught my eye. So that's the pink Cheetah Cheetah, Cheetah Cheetah, <laughs> Chica Cheetah um, here, which is a cotton French terry um, fabric. And then I don't have any French terry fabric that is exactly the same as this, but I have pulled out some others that I think would would still go with it quite nicely. So I've got this one here, and you see the two of them together there. This is the pink recycled cotton fleece back sweatshirting fabric. So it probably is like fractionally thicker than this one, but I still think it would be okay. And then this one is the one of the loop back jersey fabrics. This is specifically the baby pink and this is the Medal Elastane one. So this is a French terry as well, but because it's because the fibre it's made from is Medal, it does make it like a little bit floppier than the French terry. But in terms of thickness, I think they're quite similar. Again, I think they would be okay to combine. Um, so that is, can you see what they sort of look like together there? And then the final one that I've got um, to go with that pink, with the pink one. It doesn't really look like it goes as well here, but I feel like in real life, it probably goes a little bit better. Sometimes the camera doesn't pick up the colors as well. Pink Sorbet Marl Fleeceback Sweatshirting Fabric. Um, this is probably, again, a bit, a little bit thicker than this one, but I still think they would be okay together. So yeah, hopefully some ideas there for you. Um, then we've got, I'm planning on making the Atelier Jupe Danny jacket. What's another one for the Danny? Popular, popular project right now. Using the cinnamon teddy fleece. It says to line it, do you think a flannel fabric would be okay for the sleeves? 
I think you could probably get away with it. It might depend on how fitted the sleeves are, but from the photos that I looked at of it, it did look like it was probably, you know, it was like loose enough or like baggy enough that I think it would be fine. I think the danger is, is that if you use a flannel fabric and the sleeves are a bit more fitted or just, you know, a bit more slimline, then it can just be like feel a bit awkward when you're getting your arm in and out. But if it's got quite kind of like a looser style anyway, then you probably would be okay. Um, and then the extension part of that question would be, I'm also going to use an open-ended zip. Would the rust color go with the cinnamon? I can actually find a rust colored zip that we have to check and see if it does go with the cinnamon. Um, so apologies if I've sort of missed that. Um, but I guess that the thing to bear with the zip is that you don't, you know, you don't really see that much, you know, obviously you see the teeth, um, but you don't see a lot of the, the actual tape. So, so yeah, basically my point is that sometimes, you know, you can get away with using a zip that's not like an exact, exact colour match, as long as it sort of tones together well, because you do see such a small part of it in relation to like seeing a big part of the fabric. Um, so yeah, and then the final question that I had, and I'm going to catch up with your comments and questions here, was I'm looking for pattern suggestions for the jumbo corduroy fur backed fabric, ideally some sort of gilet. Um, so this is our this is our cord um, fleece back here. This one it comes in quite a few different colours, so it's like a nice soft cord on one side, and then yeah, it's furry on the other side. Um, you could try the I am Hathor. Um, pattern the Helen's Closet Wildwood and then Atelier Scamet also had the Berger Gilet which I thought looked quite nice as well. There are quite a few other ones out there um, so if you do know any then yeah. Oh someone's saying Pearl Soho have a lovely free Gilet pattern, good to know. Um, Alright what else have I missed here? The pink and red outfit behind you looks lovely, will there be a window display? tour video yeah there will be later in the week it literally just went in today um so i'm gonna drink some water after i've finished chatting to you just now and then yeah start filming the videos about the christmas window um okay could you use a rib knit for the stasia i bought some blue sparkly rib knit from you i think as long as it's got the right amount of percentage of stretch then yeah i don't see why not um, any pattern, somebody saying price please, I'm sorry I've lost the context of what that was, if you let, let me know if you're still watching what fabric it was and I can tell you. Any pattern recommendations for a gilet style jacket and the jumbo cord? Oh, I think I just answered that one Melanie. <laughs> um, I used that exact combination for a jara using the plain for cuffs and a neck band, excellent. Um, Ikati have a very nice gilet pattern. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that one. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, Ikati Patterns, a French company. I've just got the Fibre Mood DD and they do a sleeveless version, which would be great in the fur backed cord. Oh, nice. I don't think I realized the DD did a sleeveless version. I'll need to have a look at that. Um, yeah, the DD is the one with like the zip, isn't it? Interesting. I shall have a look at that. Um, okay, so that was everything that I was going to show you tonight and all of your questions. So thanks for sending them all in, everyone. Always nice to know what you're planning and making, what you're asking about. We do, and we do have some more new fabrics coming in this week, so hopefully they arrive in time that we can get them online. Um, and then, yeah, the, our, the, the extra delivery of those stretch velvets that we had for the kits should hopefully be coming tomorrow as well, all being well. Um, so so yeah, hopefully those of you that are on the waiting list for that fabric, we can let you know about that very soon. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a good week and that you're getting time, still time to do a little bit of sewing, a little bit of me time as we approach a busy time of year. Um, and, and yeah, so later in this week, I'll also be sharing the tour of the window display that's behind me. I've also got a gift guide to share with you as well. So lots of ideas of different um, things in that too. Um, so, so yeah, lots coming up, but I will be here next week again on Monday to chat to you. So, so I'll put the question box out as normal next weekend, but you can always just send me any questions you've got 
by DM as well on Instagram. You can email them too. And I tend to just sort of flag them and then add them to my list next week. Um, so yeah, thanks for your thanks, everyone. Oh, la last call here for the Ickish Three Gilet is the Rabbit Rabat Vest. R-A-B-A-T, Rabat Vest. Yeah, that does ring a bell. Thank you for reminding me. Um, time to go home and put your feet up. Indeed, that would be nice. I am gonna, while I'm here and the lights are on, um, I am just gonna film some of the, the Christmas window content now, but um, yeah, it saves me coming back in in another evening later on. <laughs> just get it all done tonight. But yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks for your thanks and I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.